The world of AI is one that is rapidly expanding, with models seemingly coming out every day. And with such a huge selection of models to choose from, if you want to experiment with them all, it can be quite an expensive affair. What if I told you there was a way of getting access to a good number of these models for the same price, if not cheaper, than each model individually? Well, this is where ChatLLM Teams comes in. ChatLLM Teams is a service by Abacus.ai that allows you and other members of your organization to be able to access all of these LLM models in one interface. In this video, I'm gonna be showing off a number of its capabilities. I'm gonna be doing another video in a couple of weeks talking about its more coding-centric abilities. But if you do like what you see, then make sure to click the link in the description below to get access to all of the models and all of its capabilities for one month free and then $10 a month after that. Without any further ado, let's see what ChatLLM Teams is all about. To create an account with ChatLLM Teams, all you need to do is put in your name, your email, set up an organization, enter your card details, and you get brought to this screen here. You might have it in light mode. If you do prefer dark mode, then you have light versus dark up here, and then you have other settings, such as profile settings and all that. Uh, but before we go into any actual features, I do want to show you the models that are available at time of recording anyway. So you have GPT-40, which is the default. You also have Search LLM, which is an LLM for web searches, obviously. You have Claude Sonnet. You have Llama 3.1, which is an open source model. You have Gemini 1.5. Uh, you have Abacus.ai Smorg, which is a fine-tuned version of Llama 3.1. You have GPT-01, which at time of recording was released yesterday. So you get all the new models and you've got variations of the GPTs down here. You've also got the 70 billion parameter version of Llama 3.1. You have a custom uh, model, which we'll get to later. And you also have the AI engineer, which we'll get to later as well. Uh, but before we go into those, I want to talk about some of the features uh, that Chat LLM Teams provides kind of by default. And the first one I show is, or well, the first one I want to show, sorry, is PDF analysis. So the PDF we're going to be analyzing is this one on the Atom Optimizer from Kingma and Ba. This is their actual paper on it. And we can actually pass this document into the model and we can get it to summarize or we can get it to talk about specific parts of it. Uh, so if I go in and select that upload from computer and then just select that document there and then we could do summarize the content of this whoops, PDF and because GPT-4 is pretty quick, it should do it fairly fast. There we go. And it gives us the title and it gives us you know various um, different parts of it. We could also ask it more specific questions. Uh, so I've got some prompts in my notes over here. We can ask what the advantages to the disadvantages of Adam are compared to other algorithms according to the document. And it will reanalyze the document for that information. And then we get a list of the advantages. And it actually says that the document doesn't explicitly list any disadvantages, which you would expect from a research paper. You don't have to do so PDFs, you can do it with other document formats as well. As long as the AI can take it, it can analyze it. The next thing I want to talk about, if I create a new chat, and we'll switch it up to Claude Sonic, because why not, is image generation. I'll direct your attention to these things down here. I might zoom in the video a little bit, because it is a little bit small. Uh, but we have image, code, playground. Some of these things we'll be talking about a bit later. But we can set the image one down here, and this will tell the model that we want to generate an image. And then we can describe the image to create. And I'm going to create every kid's dream image, which is a giant robot dragon breathing plasma with lasers shooting from its eyes, flying over a city or being chased by helicopters and jet fighters. I did have a lot of fun writing that prompt. And then Claude will go and generate the image for you. And the interesting thing about this is that it would generate it with DALI, as you would probably expect, but it also generates it with Flux Pro 1 which is a much newer image generation system and one that can create very realistic images, even with prompts as weird as this. So it'd be interesting to see what they come out with. There's Dali's one. The Dali has got much more of a Transformers thing. And then Flux One Pro has come out with something like this. So if we zoom in a bit more, this is, <laughs> this actually does look very cool. I, I was testing these before and this is a lot better than the one it did before. We've got a city here. We've got this giant robot dragon. Um, weirdly, all the models um, don't 
put lasers out their eyes, which is annoying. But we do have the breathing plasma, we do have the jet fires and everything. And then we have Flux One Pro, which is a much different interpretation of it. It's a much more photorealistic interpretation of it, uh, which is actually really weird looking. <laughs> And I say that in a sense that it doesn't even really look uncanny valley. It just looks well, it, it looks like a movie, actually. <laughs> the next thing I want to show is the search LLM. So if we actually if we select the model, it will take us to a slightly different interface. Search LLM is literally just a search engine using LLM, which is quite nice. So we can give it a question. What are descriptors in Python? And it will go and search the web for us and then it will analyze the results. So you can actually click on these arrows once it stops being annoying. Uh, click on these arrows and we can see that it's actually um, identified a, a better question mark term. It works out what term it should use anyway. And then you can click this analyze the results and you can see all the sources it's read up on. So it's read the descriptor guide from Python 3.12.6 documentation. It's read uh, this article here and this article here. It's read a good number of articles, I think like seven or eight or something. And you have well, 10 actually, and you have all these sources up here that you can go and look at. And then it will provide an overview of it. So in this case, it describes the descriptor protocol and then gives us a little bit of a code example, which is quite nice. And you can ask it follow-up questions as well. Uh, so can you provide a use case for this? And it will do a further search uh, using the information it already found. We can see that it's providing uh, a, a use case for it here. As well as just doing a text search, it searches for images as well. So we have you know this image and we can it's bringing up uh, YouTube thumbnails and things like that. We also have uh, video uh, results. So my one isn't in the list. That's incredibly disappointing. <laughs> and we have some news results as well. We can also, and this works for every uh, LLM model, we can also change how uh, this information is written or the mood and tone of the LLM which feels a bit weird to do for a search LLM, but it is kind of cool. So on each, it would be the most recent one, on each uh, response, you have these icons down here. So you have copy response, you have like, dislike, regenerate. This one's about sound, but you can also click this one for a humanize option. And here you can provide some prompt to tell the AI how to respond. So we're gonna do funny and clever. And we are going to say, make a joke or pun at every opportunity. <laughs> uh, I do really love AI humor. I think, I think AI models are genuinely very funny, these sort of things. And now we can regenerate that response and it will still search the same things and it will do the same way, but it will now make jokes at every opportunity. Uh, so at the end here, they're perfect for when you want to keep your data as clear as a whistle and as organized as a librarian's bookshelf. Uh, it's all about ballet dancers here. So you can see it's giving this information in a completely different tone of voice. You could, of course, make it more concise. You could make it very angry at you <laughs> if you really wanted to. Uh, and you, as I said, you can do that with every model. So Claude Sonnet, you can do that with GPT. You can do that alarmers. You can do that all sorts. So those are some of the things that you can do with existing AI models. However, you can create your own. And you can do that using the AI engineer down here. And this My Coding Mentor is one that was created on the organization already. As an example of that, we're uh, going to create our own though. And we get this AI engineer and we get a little like text conversation prompt. And it first asks us what we want to name our chatbot. And I'm going to create one to uh, espouse information about the Atom Optimizer, which is going to use the same document because you can pass it uh, a document and use that as a knowledge base. Uh, and I'm very cleverly going to call it Eve. <laughs> uh, and now we have, do you want to provide any specific data sets? So put yes. And then you'll get uh, a little wizard here, that allows you to upload a file. And we are going to upload the Atom Optimizer. It doesn't have to be in any particular format. This is just literally a research paper. 
Uh, I believe you can upload multiple documents as well. We're just going to upload the one for the sake of this. Uh, but you can create a model that is as specific or as, a, as broad as you want. Uh, we can do submit and it will upload that. It will create a data set for us, which is nice. And now it's going to ask us on Eve's purpose and the behavior. So this is where you tell the AI engineer what you want the model to be able to do and how you want it to be able to respond. So I've got a pre-prepared prompt doing all sorts of alliteration there. Uh, Eve should only answer questions about the animal optimizer and politely refuse to answer questions on other topics. She should come across as funny, uh, or sorry, as friendly as approachable. She should, she should also attempt to make jokes or puns at every conceivable opportunity. I like this example, it, it helps show off um, that these prompts are having an effect. Because normally AIs in their default state aren't the best fans of jokes. Uh, but now it will create one, it will do things with the API. And this will actually take about five minutes. So I will speed through this. And if there's anything I need to mention in the meantime, I will. Otherwise, I'll catch you when it's all done. And that's it all done. It's created the model that took about five minutes, I think, roughly. Uh, it did a lot of things, and there are actually some things that I noticed, so we will go back up and have a look. So first it checked feature mappings, and got documents and stuff. The actual training I thought was really uh, cool because it actually generates instructions <laughs> to train the model. So you're asking an AI model to write a prompt to create an area model which is interesting uh, but it's given us it's actually not used quite the same thing as we did it but it's all very familiar we've got response ins uh, instructions as well which all match up to what we did i'll do like this always begin your responsive and optimize a panel joke no matter how grown worthy it might be <laughs> i do like that once i did that and then deployed the model and then we have the model available at this url However, if we refresh it, uh, we'll get the model here as well in this drop down. So now we can go to Eve. And now we're talking to Eve. So we can say hi. And it will give us a response. Uh, <laughs> I, I was not expecting that. That got me really off guard. You know what they say about not working with animals or children? Uh, it's clearly doing as I prompted it to. So if I say, uh, can uh, you explain uh, the benefits of the, oh, spelled that wrong, that's good, of the Adam Optimizer. He will then go, after making <laughs> another joke, it will then go into a lot of detail about the advantages of the Adam Optimizer. If we try and ask it about anything else, so what did you have for lunch? She should, yes, she should pol uh, politely decline uh, to answer any other questions. So you can limit what the chat bot is able to, to talk about using this. And as you can see, you can also customize the behavior. So again, you can make it much more professional. If you wanted, say, a uh, uh, a service chatbot that responded to customer queries. You could set that all up. Um, interestingly, with a joke here, it's actually brought lunch into the equation, which is interesting. Uh, but yeah, you can customize every bit about its personality and its purpose using this too. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite feature was in this. If you're interested in giving chat LLM teams a go, then you can do so using the link in the description. As I said in the intro, I'm going to do a second video in a few weeks talking about the more coding elements of it, uh, because there are some really cool features around that as well. But I'll see you next time for whatever we do next.